Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. My name's Jason and my website jasonburnspreacher.com I just want to show you two videos of two Muslim apologists. The first one is um, Hamza, who's a well-known Muslim apologist in Hyde Park Speaker's Corner. And I just want to show you how he's exposed and how he kind of tries to get out of him being exposed. And then I want to show you another Muslim apologist, Mansour, and show how he's been exposed and how he tries to get out of it. So let's have a look. Uh, Hamza's debating two Christian women. So she's given the evidence. She's given the evidence. Now watch him get personal. Okay. As he interrupts and apologies, interrupts him, but I cannot stand it with people lie about me. All right, I said whatever's in the Quran today was a reward Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you want to challenge that? Reduce your evidence. Keep quoting Bukhari, Bukhari, Bukhari. Every single lesson of Bukhari is only 95% correct. We don't say it's 100% perfect. Yeah? No one's made that claim here yet. You seem to be standing on it. All right. First of all, elaborate on what you're saying. Don't tell me um, verse 923 to verse 924. Why is that there? Tell me the verses you're referring to, yeah? And tell me how you know they're missing from the previous Quran. And this thing you just quoted here, yeah? Show me the extra verses added in the, the Quran that's not in the other Quran. So she's just provided the evidence from day one, from the uh, using Bukhari and Qurans. And he's not do, dealing with anything specifically. See, he's getting you personal now. Muslim. Notice he's no getting Muslim personal. Here, no Muslim believes Sahih Bukhari. You are taking my well, I have to. No, no, no. Stop lying about me. Sir, I'll interrupt when you lie. I'm not going to. I'm not going to waste my time refuting lies. All right. I'm not going to waste my time refuting lies. I'm not going to waste my time refuting your lies. Didn't you say? Didn't you say? Ninety-five percent of the Sahih Bukhari is reliable. I'll tell you exactly what I said. All right. I'll make it easy for you. No Muslim here. Not one of them. Not one of them. Believe, listen, yes, but well, you're lying about me. You're lying about me. The clock has stopped. No, no, I'm not going to waste my time. I'm not going to waste my time with you in lies. No, I'm not. No, no, unfortunately, no. No, you continue like no. No, with you in lies, she says each time. No, you lie about me, I'm stopping you. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Here's what I said to you. No Muslim here. Any Muslim here, I think... Sahih Bukhari is 100% reliable. You did not say that. Not one you are lying. Right. You are lying. So what did you I say? 95%. Yes? You are lying. Who agrees with me that Sahih Bukhari is 95%? Yes? That's what we believe, right? So understand that point. I never said I never said I don't trust Bukhari. So don't make lies about me, please. Continue. Here's the thing. I'll speak my two minutes. You wait. So 
So that 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 was just a a tactic to get people to off the topic, really. Um, rather than talking like that, he should have said uh, why he thought the source was not accurate, etc. Uh, but he's he tried to uh, get off the subject in a way by causing drama. So, see, he's not letting her speak, he's, he's bullied her, because uh, she's got him on the back foot. I'll tell you what, you can come next. You can come next. You can tell us why the Bible's reliable, yeah? So, Sahih Bukhari, it is called... Sahih. It is called Sahih. As Sahih Bukhari compiled that, he already discredited 99% of what he collected. And then he kept, kept down 7,295 of them. If Muslim missionaries don't even know how the Quran compiled and then takes this, oh, we, we don't trust 5% of it, we trust only 95% of it, I would love you to tell me what does it makes you that you do not trust Sahih Bukhari, volume 6, She's got him on the ropes. He don't know what to do. Now let's just see how he deals with it. Will he go ad hominem? Will he go defensive? Or will he actually deal with that specific issue? Let's see. Thank you. You're repeating 
Notice how Muslims are now chipping in, shouting. So he he asks her how you understand it. So he's not actually dealing with the question. You know, it's crazy. So since I just made you to be familiar with the, your Sahih Bukhari hadith, and, and I would love you to I would love you to tell me since only it's my turn. My turn. See, this is a. See, the, the, this is irrelevant. The, 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 these uh, personal issues are irrelevant. You should cut to the quick, answer the issue that, that she read this passage. You should deal with it. So, he's just not dealing with it. I would love to know. I would love to know. That is this Surah 9, verse 128 and 129 comes from. That is Surah 33, verse 23 comes from. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, you have not responded to him 
No, it's the Muslims are putting in in the crowd. He has Baba Roma. Take the Bible. Baba Roma, Vatican, take the Bible outside. Tell the Christianity reality. What she took about Abu Bakr, about Omar, about Ali. I have to talk about the Papa of Roma. The Papa of Egypt. Go outside to the Christianity. Tell the truth. Go back. No, of course, I got right. I should not talk about Omar. Where the Omar Omar? Why should talk about Papa Roma? Where the Papa Roma? Vatican can lose the real Bible outside. He cannot die. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, tell him on Omar and Muhammad. Let's get it. Here we go. Papa Roma, the hand of God, can not die. My question still stands. Surah 9, verse 128. Surah 9, verse 129. Surah 23, verse 23. Also, I would love to know who was the one who made a decision that Surah Fatiha is the part of the Quran. Who is the one who made a decision that Surah 115 and 116 is not part of the Quran? And I would love, I would love also you to explain it to me. What is happening in certain? Uh, let me just read a couple of hadiths. Ubayis, Ubayis citation has been rejected. And I would love to know. So it's my turn. Why Muslims are not able to stand still and just answer the questions? I am amazed what Islam does to people. Disrespectful Muslims. That's I guess what your prophet has told you. So, I ask you a question. What is it? That 5% of the Sahih Bukhari is not reliable, what is your criteria for that? I ask you, why today do you use the house Quran? Okay? You have not responded enough my question. Here is the Asusi's Quran. This is just the first page. And I'm going to give you some examples. And I would love you to give, I would love you to back that up. Please explain it to me. Surah 1, Surah 115 and 116 as well. So she's scrubbing around in the dark, right? She knows she has no proof. So now she's throwing out straw men left, right and centre. She's doing the classic shotgun strategy. She's trying to hit me with so many things that I can't answer them all and it looks like... She'll, then she'll say, see, it didn't answer my question. Yeah, that's how she does it. Okay, so Fatiha, what's that got to do with whether or not it was in the original Quran or not? Shotgun tactics, this guy is not dealing with... He, he's not dealing with anything at all. The guy's just dancing around all over the place. Complete red herrings, yeah? You can't provide evidence, so you're scrubbing in the dark. 
Let me just respond to the Bible. Today, you can tell me, John chapter 8 shouldn't be that, because my Bible tells you, man, because you should be thankful to my Christian scholars who puts together 5,839 Greek manuscripts from the 129 AD for you to see them. I can go to the bookshop, buy a Bible which tells me what are the most, what are the, um, with the critical edition of what are those variations. But he is the Quran. He is the Quran. Can you show me where is in this Quran storing adultery verses? Please, please do check it and show it to me because according to Islamic tradition, this verse should be in the Quran, yet it is not in the Quran. Where is that verse? I would love you to tell me, according to Sahih, uh, Sahih Bukhari, where is this Dajjal verses, stunning verses? So, I would love you to tell So, I just want to um, say my, my thoughts with that. I just think uh, he he completely um, to me the Christian women uh, as th this lady especially is given her arguments, given her evidences, given her the hadith, uh, given her uh, her evidence, and to me Hamza is just blatantly ignoring it, blatantly not dealing with it. And this is the kind of dishonesty that we're seeing when we do bring scholarship, when people bring the arguments and scholarship, these people, these Muslim apologists will not deal with it. And yet they will try to pin young Christians down and, and get them to answer questions and say, you must answer them. But yet when it comes to the Christians, uh, given their evidences, the Muslims won't take it seriously and deal with it and be dishonest. Now I'm going to show you another example of dishonesty. And, and it was a legitimate point she was making. She was basically saying in the early Islamic sources, basically there were, there were textual variants. We can find it in the Hadith. And uh, we can actually see traces it in, in, in modern uh, Qurans. And uh, she was given the evidence and it, and it was a legitimate argument and it wasn't dealt with. Now here's uh, Mansur debating uh, a young man. And uh, let's let's... Let's come in and listen. Just to clarify something, are you saying that the security of Mahab's reading is not in the text? I am saying this reading is transmitted from teacher to student, teachers to student, and goes like this through memorization. So the to text. Be clear, yeah, Mansour, to be clear, I, want, I really want to be clear on this. Are you saying that the security? What do you mean the security? the reliability, the purity of the reading is not secured in the text, that it is secured purely by oral recitation. Okay, so I'm not sure why you're using the word security and reliability. Which I'm saying, no, 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 no. I am saying the transmission of the Quran is by this. So you memorize the Quran and you tell the whole of the Quran or repeat the whole of the Quran back to your teacher. Your teacher is satisfied and the teacher gives you the ijazah or permission or a certificate that you continue this teaching. This can be independent of a text because you can be a blind person and you can still have an ijazah without even reading anything. Braille is a recent concept, recent tool that people use in a written form. But the Quran has been transmitted even through perhaps blind people. It doesn't have to be through a text. So when we're talking about the transmission of the Quran, the primary mode of transmission and preservation is the memorization way, the oral form, the recited form. Okay. So in this way, let me finish sure, my point. Sure. No, in I, this I way, I but you haven't, I haven't let me finish I, my point. You spoke for quite a while. In, it's about speaking for, for a while. I, I, I need to make my point. I think you've spoken for quite a while. So you understood I, what I, I said? I, I believe so, yes. Good. You're, you're saying that the, uh, the, the recitation is an oral transmission from one reciter, I think they're called Muhaz, or what's the Arabic term for someone who memorizes the Quran? Or is it Hafiz? 
half is. Half is half. So it's what from one half is who teaches the students to become another half is and so on and so forth down through the generations. And that's the security of the text, it's the security of the, the recitation. The reason why I have a problem with this Mansour is because if that was the primary primary reason by which the Quran was secured in its transmission from one generation to the next, the actions of Uthman in the first centuries of Islam and of, and of the, the, the companions, the Sahaba, seem to indicate to me that they did not have confidence in the oral transmission as being secure. Because when the Muslims were in dispute about how best to recite the Quran, their solution to the problem was not to form some school where one memorizer taught lots of other people to memorize and so on and so forth. Their response to securing the, the continuity of the Quran and to make sure Muslims did not disagree amongst themselves was to create an edited text, a formal version, an authorized version backed by the Islamic State. That tells me that actually the early Muslim community did not share your confidence. The early Muslim community thought it necessary to secure the recitation of the Quran in manuscripts. And if that's the case, which I believe the evidence points to fairly, when we read the Hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Muslim, what that seems to point to me is that we need to look at the text of the Quran because it's the text of the Quran that helps people to learn the recitation. I suspect that every Muslim here, when they are reciting the Quran, they're not just hearing it and repeating it. They may be hearing it and reading it and repeating it, and that's the process of memorization. And if that is true, then that means the text is integral to the security of the recitation. And if that is true, we need to analyze the manuscript evidence <laughs> to see if the manuscripts are consistent. I just think uh, that guy's argument is brilliant. I just think he was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. I'll just push it on now to to a bit further on. Um So, the, the young man gives his argument, and uh, Mansour, he, and then he asks um, Mansour um, the question about the Uthman passage where it talks about this recitation and then the need for a manuscript, uh, an authorised version as it were, and he asks him uh, to acknowledge this, and Mansour wouldn't acknowledge it. And so the, the guy who made that brilliant argument asked for evidence that shows that uh, his particular understanding of Uthman is wrong and Mansur's is right. Mansur then debates and reading, uh, expounding the Uthman passage in the Hadith, uh, a completely different meaning to what it's saying that isn't in the actual Hadith. This guy calls him out on that and says, give your evidence. You're just reading that into the text. It's not actually there. Basically, my point stands that the Quran is not just rooted in oral tradition, but Uthman made a text showing that oral tradition was not as reliable as you're saying that we had to look at a text. And if we look at a text and you've admitted there are textual variants, then the Quran has not been perfectly preserved as you claim to be. So the guy presses Mansur this interpretation of Uthman for the evidence for this. Now, watch what Uthman does. I do need to know my name. What's the evidence? I do need please? to know my name. No, you don't need I to know my name. I do need to know your name. I do. His name is Bob. Yeah, yeah call Bob. Bob. Uh, Bob. My name's Bob. Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. That's it. My name is Bob the Builder. Okay, one second. So I don't think she can give you a name. I can't fix it. I promise. Can I give you another name? What's your name? So, go on. What, where, where's your evidence? I am about to give it to you. Here. What is your name? You, my name is Irrelevant. Irrelevant. I call him Irrelevant. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Now, Irrelevant made a claim that 
you know, the text is integrity to the security of the readings. This is in a one sentence summary. And the way he arrived at this conclusion is by looking at reading Sahih Bukhari, and Sahih Bukhari apparently says Muslims didn't know how to recite the text. That's not what I said. What did you say? That's not what I said. What, what did you say? What did you say? Sort of, if no, you're, no, going, if no, you're no, going to summarize my argument, yeah, tell me what he said. it is an onus upon you to do it accurately. Yeah, what did you say? I was responding to your claim that the recitation of the Quran was secured in an oral tradition. And the way that I responded to that was to point out that in the first century of Islam, the early Muslims didn't seem to share your confidence. Because in the first century of Islam, when the Muslims in Azerbaijan, who were about to invade Christian Armenia, disputed amongst themselves the recitation, the response of the Islamic establishment, the caliphate, was not to create a school where one oral teacher would teach lots of students to memorize the Quran orally, but to create a text. And if that was their response to the danger of disputes amongst the Muslims about the recitation of the Quran, that suggests to me, quite logically, that actually the, the security of the text is not just in an oral tradition, but also in the manuscript evidence. And I furthered that by pointing out that all of you who are reciting the Quran, whether you can understand it or not, and I suspect a large proportion of you can't, that the vast majority of you are not just hearing it and repeating it, but you're hearing it, reading it, and repeating it. Which means that the text in this essential part of the means of transmission. That was my argument. Okay. So now, as you realize, he's, he's made it quite clear what he means. So I asked, what was the nature of the dispute between the Muslims in Azerbaijan? What was the nature of the dispute? What were they saying to each other? And I've already said that the, 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 the hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, does not say precisely what the dispute what was. What does it say? It says that they disputed about the recitation, about how it should be recited. Okay. So this statement that they disputed about how it should be recited, is this in the hadith? From what can I you, read, yes. Okay, can you show, show it to me? I don't have it on me, no. Okay, well, we can open up, Google it. I have you make the claim. I don't have it on me. Now, okay, now hold on, this is the double standard. This is the double standard man story is working. No, it's not double standard. Okay, I let me now. No, no, I want him now. Let me respond. This is where the Hang on. on the video, let me, let me, now let me respond. Let me respond. Let me respond. Let me respond. You see, the, the ingenuity of this irrelevant person, because that's what his name now is. Now he's abusing me. No, I'm not. Do you remember no, earlier in the conversation how he was saying I should it, speak to him respectfully? You know what? And what? now he's calling me an irrelevant person. Why do you, why do you abuse people, Mansour? Excuse Just me, stick listen. to the argument. Listen, listen. Oh, My brother, what's up? What? Brother, one moment. Just stick to I didn't say, I didn't say irrelevant as an irrelevant so, person. What did he say? What did he, listen. He, she heard you. Thank you. Stop. Listen, listen. You said irrelevant. This is. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Be brave, Mansour, and be honest. Now. Do you, Be see, honest with yourself. do you see the problem? It's called a comprehension problem. Did I not ask what is his name was? Yeah. 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 And what? You refused to ask. He said, no, no, no. I said I didn't have the evidence on me. Excuse me. I admitted that openly. I, I admitted that. Our brothers, brothers, please. I please. openly admitted that. Please. Why, why, I am, brothers. I'm often confused wait, 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 wait. why the Muslims are okay. going to speak as corner. Thank you, thank you. think that the best way to win an argument is by Excuse twisting me. I'm, words. I'm talking now. I'm talking. Facts. Listen. So I asked him his name. Is this irrelevant? So I said, I will call you irrelevant. No, I said the name was irrelevant. I didn't call that, that's so right. irrelevant. That's so it just descends to that, really, talking about his name and the guy's name and what he's, you know, and and uh, it, it just gets off topic. And that is exactly what Mansour wanted, you know. So basically, um, two Muslim apologists, Hamza and Mansour, were pressed concerning the textual criticism of the Quran and if you notice the both of them weren't really dealing with it when Mansour got a chance he went personal and 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 uh, got out of the situation by talking about the guy's name uh, Hamza uh, went personal talking about you calling me a liar and really not actually dealing with the information being given him and this is the intellectual dishonesty of the Muslim apologist in Hyde Park and you've got to ask yourself if you can't one of the things about the textual criticism of the Quran there's never been a critical edition of the Quran ever done you know this is what scholars are saying right 
So basically, the the claim that the Quran has never changed is it cannot be substantiated, because nobody's ever had the chance or ever done a compilation of all the manuscripts that we have, and actually prove their point, showing the manuscripts that they've used in the textual edition and so there's never been a, a a critical edition of the Quran ever done textually so basically what they're doing at the moment is they're propagating a lie and it's difficult to get to the bottom of it because they're not being open with the evidence and not willing to look at their early sources that show that there has been changes in the Quran they try to get away with it by saying that we have oral tradition but this mythical oral tradition uh, is a way of, of getting the attention away from the manuscripts because Mansour even admitted in this video that there were textual variants within the ancient Qurans so basically the bottom line is as Muslims you, 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 you're being lied to uh, and as the Muslim apologists are intellectually dishonest and uh, when you start to corner them they don't really want to answer the questions Okay, are you finished? So we can talk about are it. Are you finished? Please. Good. 